One of the gold standards in the automotive industry that mates high performance to Uber luxury is provided by BMW in their flagship sedan, the 7 Series. Now, the 7 Series has been around for five generations. That's nearly five decades. And we're here at the Monticello Circuit near New York City in the United States of America to drive the all-new sixth generation 7 Series. Now, in this car, BMW intends to headline a dynamic driving character that's well unparalleled or unmatched in the industry, combined with a new level of luxury and futuristic technologies or innovations. Now, does this car meet all of those expectations? Well, let's see. Globally, this is the sixth generation 7 Series. BMW first introduced the 7 Series in 1977 and it has continued to grow into a benchmark driver's car. Despite its size, luxurious trappings and technology feasts, the 7 Series has always satisfied its consumers with its driving dynamics and that continues to be a strong selling point to date. The latest cars, codenamed G11 and G12, are based on BMW's modular CLAR platform and focus was on making these cars lighter and structurally stronger. The chassis is a mix of carbon fibre, aluminium and steel all bonded together to get the desired stiffness and rigidity. This was achieved thanks to lessons learned from the i3 and i8 and helped drop weight in the 7 series by up to 130 kilos. The exterior design is actually quite clever because it almost retains the same characteristics as the previous generation car. So if you look at the front end, it appears to be sleeker and more well-defined when in reality certain measurements, like the height of the front end, stays the same as before to conform to pedestrian safety requirements. It's a handsome car when viewed from the front, though the side profile still appears to be a bit bland and chubby. I do wish BMW had a more innovative idea of altering the appearance of that side profile rather than simply using a dull waistline. The 7 Series that will come to India will be the long wheelbase versions, so passengers get the benefit of additional legroom. Now the 750 Li will be the first uh, car to come down to India and it will be showcased at the Auto Expo. That will be a CBU model. It will shortly be followed by the 730LD if that car isn't shown not launched at the Auto Expo as well. But the 730LD will be a CKD, it will be assembled in India, so expect competitive pricing for that sedan. BMW will offer two engine options in the new 7 Series uh, when it comes down to India. And these are in the same configuration as what is already available in our market. There's the 750LI and the 730LD, the L of course denoting the long wheelbase versions of these cars. However, the more powerful one uh, is going to be the 750Li, that's the flagship V8 petrol, the most, one of the most powerful engines BMW offers in uh, the luxury sedan range. You get close to about 445 uh, PS of max power and uh, close to about 600 Newton meters of max torque. The diesel, similar configuration uh, to India, however a little more power and uh, better top power and torque ratings, a little more efficiency and refinement from that engine as well. And that of course will be the best seller. The diesel engine in the 730D is an inline six-cylinder turbocharged unit with 265 horses and 620 newton meters on tap. BMW claims this configuration is slightly more efficient than before, but this could also be a result of the lower weight. Unfortunately, the USA is a predominantly petrol market, as a result of which we did not get our hands on the diesel 730LD. Like every other BMW sedan sports car, the 7 Series comes with adaptive uh, suspension as well. Uh, except, while most of the other cars you get a Sport Plus, at least in the sportier BMWs, in the 7 Series, which is built more towards luxury and comfort, you get a Comfort Plus, which is at the other end uh, of the dynamic range. Comfort Plus effectively gives you the most uh, soft or the softest suspension settings the most comfortable ride quality. If you want to put a baby to sleep, then that's the mode to be in. However, you can take the 7 Series all the way up to Sport mode. And in Sport mode, well, you get uh, much quicker engine responses, the gear shift, well, that time as well. Those change points differ considerably from Comfort mode. On the whole, it's a far more dynamic mode. The steering gets uh, a lot more heavier. The 
suspension gets a lot more stiffer. All the components come together to make this a far more dynamic car and it is a very dynamic car. Here on Monticello circuit driving this car, you can immediately make out the differences as you shift from comfort to sport mode. There's a lot more body roll in the comfort mode, but sport mode tightens this car considerably. It's a lot sharper, it's a lot more focused when in sport mode. While it's great to be in that rear seat, comfortable to stretch out your legs and enjoy that space and luxury, BMWs are all about uh, driving, the joy of driving. And in the 7 Series, a lot of that focus goes around the driver in this driver's seat. The cockpit essentially, I do like the way the dashboard has been designed to make it a closer, more compact cocoon uh, around the driver. There was one element missing in the later generations, the later iterations of the 5th uh, generation 7 series. But now in this, the 6th generation 7 series, I like the way the centre console tilts itself closer towards the driver. This is a very personal, very private area. I like the feel on the steering wheel, I like the quality of materials used on the dashboard, the combination of wood, leather and exotic uh, metals. It all works very well to create a fairly luxurious cabin. The only benchmark that I'd see this would have to beat is the S-Class and we've already seen how the S-Class stands. Quality of materials, quality of finish inside that, the premiumness of that cabin, well, is truly remarkable. I'm not going to comment on where this stands, it uh, will need a closer scrutiny and once this car comes down to India and we're able to do a comparison test between those two cars, uh, well that's when uh, I'll pass an opinion on where the 7 series stands. I, uh, however, I'm impressed but I still think BMW needs to work harder on what it needs to do in this interior. Well, we just come off the circuit, but uh, the drive with the BMW 7 Series wouldn't be complete if we didn't take this out on the road, so we're going to just do that. However, I'm going to get out of the driver's seat, get into that rear passenger seat and tell you more about uh, just how good the comfort and luxury aspect is in this car from right there in the back. So, you're ready to go out uh, for a drive on that street circuit to see just how the 7 Series performs on roads. But before we actually begin, uh, here's one of the most innovative features I want to talk to you about uh, inside this new BMW 7 Series. And it has everything to do with this small device right here. So, as you can see, it's a perfectly normal Samsung tablet, which is used inside the new BMW 7 Series. And it functions like a regular tablet as well. You've got all the applications that you'd need to use, except for this tiny one out here, which is the BMW remote application. And that takes you to an interface which allows you to control all the functions inside the car such as the interior lighting, you can change the brightness, change the color, uh, do various things and various parts of the car as well. Um, you've got the sun protection which allows you to open up uh, all the blinds whether it's on the windows or the sunroof, the moonroof and also allows you to close all of them as well. You can also control uh, the seat, you can reduce or uh, raise or lower the headrest and several other functions as well. You can control uh, the climate functions they want it cooler or warmer inside this cabin. You can also control the media and radio options and that involves both uh, the screens at the front and the screen at the rear. You've got the navigation system, you can control settings and then of course applications takes you back to the home screen on your tablet where you can control all the rest of the applications as to what you want to do. There isn't this natural sense of progression of luxury in the new 7 series. So while there's a lot of uh, exotic elements and components used to enhance that luxury effort, it just still feels very, very gimmicky, unlike the S-Class, which felt like a natural progression, a natural evolution of luxury. The BMW 7 series just doesn't feel like it's reached that level yet. Overall, the new 7 series does not feel like an evolution of the series. It simply feels like BMW took the older car and tweaked certain elements to make it contemporary. I simply don't get the sense of this car being a whole new generation. Neither do I get the sense of timelessness like you would in the Mercedes-Benz S-Class. I really can't make up my mind whether it needs a full thumbs up or a full thumbs down. But that's because while BMW has retained some of the integrity of the 7 Series' driving character, well, the luxury and opulence that you'd expect in a flagship sedan like the 7 Series, well, that isn't at a whole new level yet. 
So while it definitely has a few strengths, it also has a few shortcomings.